Okay, thank you. Council Member Brenner. Um, could the sheriff please come down here? I have a couple, several little <coughs> quick questions. Um, just because I did take notes when people were talking and I want, I, there's some questions I had too. What is this thing about another jail within a mile not being legal? I, I've never quite gotten it. There's that. not another jail within a mile. The U.S. Border <laughs> Patrol has a station there and oh. they have two holding cells. That so they holding can hold cells people are different. for up to four hours until they're transported to Seattle, wherever they transport federal prisoners to. And for what I understand, those holding cells have never been utilized. They built them. But they're different than a jail. Right, that's not a jail. Okay, so it would be two jails within a mile, is that? You know, I'm not familiar with the, the Ferndale ordinance, but it's oh, gone through, I didn't, the, it's I don't gone it's through the Ferndale, Ferndale staff and... Uh, I didn't think it was the Ferndale the, ordinance. I thought what they were talking about was state law or something. Not that I'm aware okay. of, Okay, no. all right. Um, have bail, has bail caught, is the people paying bail, have their bails gone up in cost? There are judges make the decisions uh, on bail based on the risk the person presents to the community okay. and the risk that they're not going to appear in court. Uh, sheriff's office has nothing to do that. Uh, do with that. We've seen some okay. bails go lower and some go higher and we've seen deviations amongst the individual judges and how bails are set. Okay. Um, and somebody already answered, the property down the street is cheaper, but it's not zoned for this. Um, this is definitely not a done deal, I want to assure people. But um, I brought up something today. I talked to you about it yesterday, and I brought it up in committee. And uh, I have some other comments I want to make, because I do support buying the property if we are if we'd have a clause in there that says if any significant pollution is found in the, in the uh, initial construction phase, uh, the previous owner will be liable. I, you know, I heard that as is, where is thing over when, when you read that thing today, and I'm, I'm very concerned as someone who had heard rumors for so many years that um, there was illegal dumping done there, that and if, you know, I'm hopeful it's not, and I don't want it to be there, but I just feel like we have a responsibility to the taxpayers to have some wording in there that um, the fellow who bought it, he knew the previous owner. And I know that there was information that the two of them had to have shared. So that's one thing. Um, I brought it up today in committee, and I would like a clause in there like that. I want to comment on some of the other comments that were brought up. The thing about mental health and drug court, we have a drug court. I don't believe we reduced funding to drug court. I know it came up, but it was my understanding it wasn't reduced. The federal I? government reduced. Uh, yeah, well, that's not us, but we didn't reduce our funding to drug court. It was on an agenda item, but I, we spoke against it, I remember. There's been a modest reduction in staffing, but drug court is uh, fully operational and uh, is able to handle as many people that uh, want and qualify uh, for the program. Okay. And as the, uh, regarding the mental health court, I have been wanting mental health court for years. Um, I'm bipolar, and I have been around some pretty sick people in my life. And I got to tell you, uh, the mental health court would probably do more to save the taxpayers' money and do beneficial results for people who need, sorry, need to stay on their meds. And uh, it's really hard because of some of the side effects of those medications. Uh, and I'm very sympathetic to people who have a hard time with that. But we need to have you know, we need to have a robust, I love your word, robust mental health court, and we're working towards it. We are. And you're shaking your head, no. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And that's something that I want. So I know we, it, we've talked about it, and we are working on it. So um, that's real important to me. And drug court, uh, both of them, I think they're big alternatives. They would help with, they would not only help, but we are, moving towards that stuff, whether we ever had a new jail or not. It's not one or the other. And that's what's bothering me. They, it keeps being brought up that it's one or the other. 
and it's not. Uh, in fact, one of the proposals, one of the option proposals for the beds are to have separate areas for people who can, you know, so that we can do some of the things that we couldn't do if they were in a, a real jail population. Maybe there's a different way to do it, but everything, you know, still has its cost, and I want to see the best results, especially I'd rather go towards mental health court and make that be one of the best results, period. So I'm, I'm very much there, and we talked about costs already, and I'm, I know who you are, and I'm expecting lots of help with that because um, I'm going to be working on that too. So, but I do want that amendment uh, about protecting. Have you made an amendment? I Why did. don't you make one? My amendment is to add to the purchase agreement if any significant pollution is found in the initial construction phase, the previous owner is liable. Executive Laos, did you have a comment on that? I do. Um, I had the opportunity to call the uh, real estate agent that's handling this uh, for the sellers. Uh, he contacted the sellers. Um, as per the request of uh, Council Member Brenner, uh, the answer that came back was is that uh, their attorneys and the Whatcom County attorneys in Whatcom County has put together a very solid purchase and sale agreement that identifies everybody's responsibilities. And uh, they, within that is, is we had a year to do our due diligence as it relates to the property, which is standard practice. Uh, we have done that due diligence. Um, our CEPA official, Tyler Schroeder, I think this afternoon gave a very good example of that. But uh, for anybody's um, information, November 12, 2008, Wacom Environmental did a uh, test pit sample um, of the property in a various different locations. Uh, more to, willing to pass that out. We had uh, members of the community that uh, questioned the results of, uh, of those studies and were questioning whether the site was um, without, um, without contamination. As I mentioned, we spent uh, quite a few tens of thousands of dollars uh, in the past months uh, re reaffirming the work that has been done and doing some new test, uh, test results. Everything has come back 100% clean. Um, so it's my recommendation that uh, we move forward with the purchase and sale as agreed upon uh, for the $6,093,491 uh, acquisition price. Um, so um, I think that at this, at this late date, um, knowing that we have done our due diligence and knowing standard real estate practices is that I would recommend that the council does not um, authorize that uh, additional language uh, into the contract documents. Okay, Councilmember Brenner. This isn't our standard anything. This is the most expensive purchase we're going to make when, you, when we get it all done. And I just feel like the taxpayers, if, if the executive is correct, and I, like I said this afternoon, I don't uh, question what he believes. I just... I remember hearing enough about illegal dumping there that I don't expect to, it, I don't expect it to ever be a problem. But I really feel like we should have that clause in there. So I'm sticking to it. Councilmember Knudsen. Well, um, I have a, a separate question, but I'm no environmental lawyer, so I'm uh, not familiar with this stuff. But I do um, have some experience with people buying commercial properties that had something on the property that was done by the previous owner. And if there was illegal dumping, they would be responsible for it, is my understanding. What if it was done before they owned it? Well, the party that did it would be responsible He's for dead. it. He's dead. Well, OK, I'm just, so I, that, that being said, there's so many rumors about all this stuff that, I, you know, I think we've done a lot of EIS studies and whatnot. My concern was one of the one of the people brought forward um, something about setbacks that we had reduced the setbacks. But now, before, when I look before you move on to that, let's vote on Councilmember Brenner's motion to amend to oh, include that language. There was, a there was a motion. That's my motion. Yeah. She made me make. And a then motion. we'll come back and we can talk about the setbacks. Uh, okay. okay. Anybody else have any comments on Councilmember Brenner's motion to amend to include language? What I said. What you said. 
Very to briefly. discuss it? Councilmember Kremen. Very briefly, Madam Chair, and it, it is, it's been a long day. Um, I, you know, I, I, I concur with the intent in which the uh, amendment is being offered, but uh, I also concur with Councilmember Knutson. Uh, I believe, and I'm not a lawyer, and I, I see where our legal counsel is, is no longer with us this evening, but I think under the, under the EPA and the Brownfield um, we, we may, I, I, I think that Council Member Knudsen is correct in that whoever owned the property during the time in which the, the pollution or contaminants uh, uh, were, you know, for lack of a better word, uh, were deposited, um, they would be ultimately responsible. That's my understanding. So I think that the the amendment offered by Councilmember Brenner is is unnecessary. Councilmember Brenner, well, I respectfully disagree. Just because what it says, the wording is as is. As is means you could have anything, and I hear that is so far back. I mean, we're talking 30 years ago was when I was hearing Amen. these concerns, and I. I'm not, and I don't know, the, the person who owned the property is dead. I don't know where you'd go to get that money from who. And we're all talking hypothetical here. Absolutely. There's no known pollution no, on the property. No, not that I know so I we're, just want to cover. I just want to make sure the audience knows that we're talking hypothetical. Hypothetical. Okay. I want to cover the taxpayers here. Okay. So anybody else have a comment on Councilmember Brenner's motion to amend? All right, seeing none, all those in favor of Councilmember Brenner's motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Uh, that fails with Councilmember Brenner in support. Okay, Councilmember Knudsen. Yeah, um, somebody mentioned uh, I, uh, Ferndale had reduced the setbacks or something on this, and I, I'm just curious, uh, looking at the citing, what we were presented from uh, the, the jail folks, it looks to me like uh, from any property line, the setbacks were something like a couple hundred feet. Uh, but they were 350 before. Well, what, what <laughs> any idea, are, are any of the setbacks on the proposed siting less than 300 feet from any adjacent property that has, well, I guess uh, any kind of housing or anything on it? The original Ferndale Code had the setback uh, to a correctional facility being at 350 feet. Yeah. Um, they went through a public hearing process and a code change process this summer, and they reduced that 350 to 250 feet. And now, there is stipulations that were attached to that in terms of to be able to go to that 250 for uh, privacy screening, visual view, viewing of prisoners so that they couldn't look out, uh, lighting, uh, a list of conditions that we needed to comply with to be able to make that 250 work. The jail planners put together the original um, footprint of the facility using the 350 foot setback. It does work using the 350 feet, but it gives us a little bit more flexibility in terms of uh, design value going to the 250. I would guess that that will be something that we'll be engaging with, uh, with our designers after we figure out how we're going to pay for it and we start engaging them in the final design of it of figuring out what the exact um, setbacks are going to be to be able to utilize the property uh, um, most efficiently. The property's got quite a slope from the front to the back, and the farther you move the thing back is, as you get into you get into some more difficult grading issues. So there's going to be a balance of where we want to set that within the 250 to the 350 foot mark. Okay, Councilmember Brenner. Well, I can't speak for the city of Ferndale, but I do know that we said very strongly that we wanted to be sure that the concerns of the neighbors 
were not only listened to, but were incorporated. And when we get to the design part, if this passes, if we get to the design part, I'm not going to support 250 feet. I'm only going to support 350. I think we owe it to the neighbors of the property, period. Okay. Is there any other discussion on this item? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor of the resolution to authorize the ex executive to purchase the LaBounty Road property for the purpose of constructing a new Whatcom County Jail and Sheriff's Headquarters say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Councilmember Brenner, um, that passes six to one. Councilmember Brenner opposed. Mm -hmm. I'd like to take a moment to thank the, the council and the team and the community for engaging in this. I know that it's uh, not to everybody's satisfaction that, uh, that this transaction is taking place, but, but I am pleased that we were able to work through it over the last two years, and I'm looking forward to taking the next steps in the next few months to um, engage the um, community and the electeds around to try to figure out a plan of, uh, of, of paying for it and re-engaging in the, the, the size and the scope of the facility so that we can do the best job possible for the community, making sure that the neighborhood is uh, cared for in the, in the best way possible and uh, taking the time to study uh, alternative uh, um, alternative ways to look at how we um, uh, treat and respect uh, the people that we have incarcerated to do the best job that we can to get them back out as productive members of the community. So uh, I thank you for uh, this big decision tonight. Uh, I know that it's, uh, uh, it's a lot of dollars and it's a major step forward in um, building what I think the majority of us think know that we need is is we need a new correctional facility. So thank you so much. You are welcome. And thank you for doing the work and bringing it to us. And four years, we've got a site. I hope it doesn't take four years to get it built, Sheriff Elfo. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Council Member Kremen. Thank you. And I, I appreciate your indulgence. Um, I, I want to emphasize the fact that the action that we just took is not indicative that the county or the administration is engaged in a done deal because nothing could be further from the truth. We're going to have a, I'm sure we're going to have an arduous, meaningful, and uh, probably lengthy public discussion about this uh, this proposed jail and it's uh, this is not a done deal and i also want to say that if and when this jail were to be realized and constructed and and finally uh, utilized I, I think it's imperative that the correctional system here in Whatcom County uh, take to heart the Restorative Community Coalition and people that are of like mind because I think we need to emphasize and focus on alternatives to the traditional uh, correctional system that not just Whatcom County has been uh, using, but pretty much every county in the entire country has been using, that has demonstrated that it is a system that does not yield uh, results that we would like to. So I, I think that, as, as Councilmember Brenner said, um, mental health court works. I've seen it firsthand in person in Cook County. The council members there are very proud of that system and there are programs like that and many others that we can use in conjunction with a 
correctional facility of the traditional type and protect the community in a much better and much more effective way. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Kremen. All right, moving on, we've got item number six. This is from the Planning and Development Committee. Councilmember Knutson. Yes, we had a discussion and recommendation to Council acting as the Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District Board of Supervisors, Supervisors regarding representation on the Wyra One Planning Unit. And uh, it was a, quite the discussion, and I think Councilmember Brenner might have a recommendation out of this. Councilmember Brenner? I have a motion. I move that the county appoint a uh, member of the uh, Flood Control District Board of Supervisors to be a voting member on the planning unit. Because the, uh, as, that, as such, the, the Board of Supervisors actually really um, has an awful lot to do with what is done with water quality, water quantity, stormwater facilities, all kinds of things. And I think it's extremely important. And um, I would like, in, in addition to that, I'd like the, um, I think, I talked to Chris uh, Bruski about this, I would like somebody to consider having county staff as a as a technical advisory position instead of a voting position so we wouldn't really would be increasing positions we would uh, Chris is a wealth of information he's really good and personally I might be wrong but I don't think he wants to be a voting member Councilmember Kremen I support Councilmember Brenner's is this an am amendment that you just made? Motion. Motion. I support her motion wholeheartedly. All right. Any other discussion, Councilmember Mann? This there may not be an easy answer to this question, but do, do we have the authority to do that? Yes, we do. We do. Yes. Did we origin Did the council originally appoint people to Wyra One? I thought it was a state, but it's a state law. It's a state it's a, or the but county? it's a local wire, and we do have the authority to put, we have the authority to appoint members to fill different water quality, water quantity slots. Especially if they're affiliated with the county. Yes. Mr. Bruski, uh, this is Executive Laws. Mr. Bruski uh, in the hall uh, before, uh, before the meeting, um, asked me that if this came up that uh, that the council uh, give us the opportunity to run that by our legal team as to what um, what the council can do in terms of uh, appointments um, on and to the to the uh, uh, the planning body because it was um, put together by the county and the joint board in the original establishment of it, we all know that the planning unit has their own process at this time. So all, all I'm asking at this particular time is is that we would uh, give us until December 10th to take a look at this and then come back to you with a recommendation. Uh, other than that, if you feel that you have the legal authority to do it, then you take action on it tonight. Councilmember Kremen. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I, 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 with all due respect, Mr. Executive, uh, it seems pretty elementary and obvious to me that the county um, has every bit of authority to determine who represent who is its official. Uh, representative, and I mean by voting member, uh, on on the planning unit. Uh, I don't think I don't think there's any question about it whatsoever. I mean, it's just it's just like whatever uh, organization or group is represented on the planning unit. Aside from the county, they have the authority to select who's going to represent them. So I, I don't think that there's any 
ambiguity or any uncertainty whether or not the county council has the has the uh, authority to appoint the individual who's going to be the voting member representing the county. So I, I, I really think I would like to vote on it this evening. Um, if the you know, will of the majority of the council agrees with me, I think that, that would, we have a lot of things going on and in, on the last meeting of the year, and I don't see any reason to defer action until the next meeting. I, I, I think it can be done this evening and would like to see it done. So you're, excuse me, you're appointing for a Wachtum County representative then, so we've moved away from the flood control zone district. No, I'm talking, I'm talking about Whatcom County. Okay. The, the, we, the, the entity, what, you know, the, yeah, and the, well, earlier today it came up in the context of being a member of the Flood Control Zone District. That's well, the, that okay. Just so you know, that's uh, all right. Uh, yes, right. I mean it's just like we're the health board as well. So yeah, okay. So yeah, the board of supervisors uh, that a member of the board of supervisors be uh, a, a, that a member of the board of supervisors be the voting member representing the county or representing the board, the board of. of Board of Supervisors. Board of Supervisors. Right. Council Member Weimer and then Mann. I, I guess I just want to make sure I understand the motion because I think Ms. Brenner talked about replacing the, the council or the county representative that currently sets on the planning unit with a member from this body, which would be the flood zone or the, or the county, I guess, either way. I'm not saying replace. I still want Chris to serve as a technical as a advisory member. But we'd have one vote, not one two votes. Group. Correct. Yeah, exactly. I, I wasn't trying to increase the votes. I, I guess I, I'm going to vote against the motion just because I, I want to support the executive's uh, idea that we come back and have a, a more robust discussion of this in December because even Mr. Richards today when he talked to us said this was going to go to the planning unit on December. I can't remember what it is, 17th or 18th because they had to vote whether they wanted to expand the planning unit or not. So I don't understand all the legal implications of who can and can't be on the planning unit. And personally, after sitting on the planning unit, I, I think it makes more sense to have our professional water staff as our representative there with constant input from us than to have one of the council members. Council Member Mann. I would just say nothing about the planning unit is ever been elementary or obvious or easy to sort out. I mean, we've been struggling with all manner of disagreements over various iterations of, of, of this. Um, I don't really care if it's a technical advisory board member or if it's a council member or if it's a board of supervisors member. I really don't have a strong preference Good. who does it as long as it's somebody that everyone and the, you know, that the, the county legislative body, along with some consultation with the executive, believes is a good representative. But, um, you know, and I, I don't know if it was supposed to originally be a member of the administration or, you know, the, the executive branch or the legislative branch to appoint it. So that's why I asked the question, like, do we have that authority? And I. I I agree with that on the face of it, it seemed like, yes, the county should be able to appoint whoever we want, but I'd rather just wait and get some clarity before we muddy the planning unit any further, uh, you know, just a, another question mark. So my understanding is that we would be appointing somebody from the flood control District Board of Supervisors as a as a government that is its own government, not as the county, and we would not be taking the county position. We would be nominating somebody from that um, board of supervisors. But then, how would that person replace? It wouldn't Mr. replace. Bruski? I don't think it would replace it would, Mr. Bruski. Councilmember Kremen. Uh, to clarify, Councilmember Mann, uh, Mr. Bruski would still participate. 
attend the meetings as a staff support person, not as the county representative. And the reason, the reason I think, well, I know the reason why I believe uh, we, it should be a member, a, a board of you know, one of the board of supervisors is that we are, we represent the the planning unit in total. We we are their elected legislative representative, and um, I don't think it should be the. A, a staff person representing the executive branch. The executive branch has a seat on the uh, on the joint board, and so therefore, and the whole purpose of the planning unit, the way I understood it and understand it today, is that the the, the planning unit is to be represented by the county. To the to the, the the joint board, and there's no. It just makes sense that it be an elected representative who is accountable to the all the people of Whatcom County collectively, whether they're whether they're a tribal member, whether they're a farmer, whether they're a water association member, or whatever. We represent everyone and that that's the whole purpose of the planning unit and, and I think it should be somewhat divorced from the joint board so that that's my explanation and rationale for my position okay councilmember Brenner state your motion again clearly clearly okay my motion is that the Whatcom County Flood Zone District Board of Supervisors appoint a member to the WIRA planning unit. As the voting member. As, the vo as a voting member, yes. Okay. In place of the... I'm not going there. That's, okay. that's something that will be figured out in the future. Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, I think it should say should as assessed. the voting member, not a voting member. As the, because then it, then it... As it, the voting member uh, representing the, county. the Flood Control the Zone Board of Supervisors. Is that repetitive enough? <laughs> okay. All right. Councilmember Weimer. So with that motion, the county still has two votes on the planning unit. Right. Well, I'm hoping to change that at another. You said it's the vote of the flood control, so maybe it takes two motions, one to remove from well, with our county council hats on to remove the county representative. Well, I, that's same. a different issue, and I do want to discuss that, but to me it's a separate motion. So we're adding another voting member. No, why don't you, you know what, if I may, Madam Council Chair, I'll, I think to clarify it, and I, I don't have the verbiage, but the intent is to be the voting member representing the Board of Supervisors and the county. And then that takes, and that means you only have one vote. Amendment, just so it clarifies it for, because I'm fine with that. The problem is, is that we have two different governments here, and I don't think we can take one vote with. Yeah, I think we with, need to just do it for the Board of Supervisors, yeah. period. I'm clear. I'm okay, very clear. you know. It's late. I, I yield. I succumb. So let's ask. Oh, don't so, so the clarification that that <laughs> might be it's useful here. Like, uh, the clarification is: um, would we have two mem two voting members if we were to appoint a, a board of supervisor? And uh, does the planning unit need uh, to approve the membership? And no, well, you don't think so? No, they don't approve the membership. I'm just of the saying that was a question groups. that was asked. I somebody know. somebody asked if we had the authority. And I, I think did. it's if we're gonna if we're gonna get clarification, let's get all the questions answered. So on the tenth we have all those questions answered. And you may be certain. Well, I am certain that the different groups decide for them it, they form their own little thing and have meetings to decide who represents that group. Okay. But nobody else has anything to do with that. Okay. 
people waiting for two weeks to find out the answers to how this might work? I'm, go I'm going to say let's vote tonight. We can get more information so we can figure out about uh, Chris, Chris's, uh, to me that's sort of a different issue. It's in addition, but it's a different issue, and I want to get that clarified, and I'm fine getting more information on all this stuff. But I want to vote on this. So your motion stands without Councilmember Kremen's last-minute uh, word change regarding Just say, Board of Sur Supervisors yeah. and County Council. Because I can't support and, both. And so, right, we can't do it. Uh, we'd have to. Uh, we can only do it with one hat at a time. So, if you want it to be the council too, I, we can do that. You know, weeks. Madam Chair. Councilmember Kremen. Um, I have a high regard for our clerk. And it, it appears that our clerk feels that it would be in the best interests of all to defer further action on this issue until the December 10th meeting to get clarity, hopefully, from our legal counsel regarding this matter. So are you moving to hold this until yes, I December am. 10th? Okay. So we need to vote on that. So all those in favor of holding this idea, <laughs> this motion, until December 10th, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Brenner. Uh, but that passed 6 to 1. Councilmember Brenner opposed. So we'll get the answers and come back to it. Yep. All right. Thank you for trying. <clears throat> All right, so item number seven, this had no committee assignment. We have a resolution identifying 2014 and 2015 salaries and benefits for Whatcom County Council members. And I need a motion for I'll approval. Move approval. Council member Mann moves approval. Council member Brenner. I just want to say for the record, this was, these were the salaries created by the salary commission that was a public vote by the public to, uh, Produce the commission and their and their uh, votes. So this was done by the salary commission, not by the county council. All right. All those in favor of the resolution, say aye. 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 Opposed. That passes 7-0. And we're on to introduction items. And it looks like we've got um, four introduction items. Uh, the last item was added to the agenda. That's the ordinance amending the 2014 Whatcom County budget third request in the amount of $326,000. Is there a motion to accept the introduction items? I move to accept them. All right. They've been moved for acceptance. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That passes 7 to 0. Is there any other business? Okay. Oh. I I'm just going to throw it Brenner. out there. I'm not sure now, after talking to Councilmember Kremen, what I, how I, I want. I want to put on the re, on the agenda for next meeting, a discussion on the EDI money that we talked about for the West Bakerview project. Um, if in fact we need it for stormwater facilities that already are an existing need, for for what exists. I am fine with it, but if it's to do more stormwater facilities for a future mega mall and Costco, I'm definitely not in support. So I need to get more information. But um, I was going to do it, and then I spoke to Councilmember Kremen, and he he feels, and I respect his opinion, that um, this is for existing stormwater problems. No, so we no, need to, it is not. It's not. It, it, no. Councilman the, Crawford. The permitted, the, the, the development that is there today has the stormwater treatment that is, that is required for that development. Including the, uh, everything there that's, that's existing All now? the new stuff. Oh. That, all the new stuff that's permitted today. Right. There's no, oh, Costco's okay. not permitted. The shopping center's not permitted. The streets aren't permitted. So, okay. so, so the stormwater is for things coming up. It's not okay. for anything to do with what exists now. What exists now. Okay. Yeah, so, 
Well, then I would I would like to put that on the agenda for the meeting in two weeks as an uh, introduce it tonight discussion and vote on whether to continue with EDI funding for the West Baker. Museum. So you would move to reconsider that decision. To reconsider, yes, that's a good one. Yeah. Let me. Can I throw Councilmember Crawford? Yeah, I, I wasn't going to bring anything up about this tonight because it's late, but. Um, since you brought up the stormwater, the mayor of Bellingham was quoted in the newspaper the day after our uh, last meeting two weeks ago as saying, we have no, what's the phrase she used? We have no... Um, Plan? Uh, second, yeah, the, it was no second alternative. In other words, the question was asked by the reporter, uh, what... Uh, what uh, will you do if you don't get the funding from the county? And she said, there's no plan B. That was it. There, there is no plan B. Uh, when this discussion is, I, I won't go into all the details of it, but as I have already informed you, came before the Transportation Improvement Board. During our work session on Thursday last week, Ted Carlson uh, was asked the same question and said, yes, the city will uh, fund one way or another that stormwater facility regardless. Obviously that's a, that was a big question for the Transportation Improvement Board because uh, if the uh, funding for stormwater, which a big part of it's going to be these roads, uh, wasn't there, then why would we fund the roads? Um, so when pressed for details on that, he said, well, we already have a, a stormwater utility uh, fund in the city that's well funded. Uh, he talked about some bonding scenarios. He, he named uh, two or three uh, things right off the top of his head that they could do it. Uh, I, I don't want to say all that, though, in the context that I think we should or should not um, storm, fund stormwater. I think, uh, I think at some point I would assume the city is going to come back and say, well, County Council, what are you going to do? And I, I was thinking the ball was kind of in their court. Um, you know, we have already informed the city uh, what, or at least the, my take on it is, we've informed the city what we uh, would like to move forward with that, in, and that would be traffic information, not information about stormwater. And uh, you know, if they want to come forward and give us the traffic studies, and uh, uh, particularly the part you know where the mayor of Ferndale said that 45% of the traffic coming south was going to be to exiting at Slater and using Pacific Highway, but in another portion of that, he said uh, that would equate to 15 cars per hour during the peak traffic period. I think he points out an anomaly there that has not been um, uh, figured. So uh, I'll tell you this much. It's not just us in the city of Bellingham. Uh, the State Transportation Improvement Board in granting the money, and I, I don't know how clear I was in my letter, um, is not saying these issues don't exist and not ignoring those. And, and uh, the State Transportation Improvement Board will be watching this closely, too. So um, those answers still need to come forward. And in my mind, um, if the city comes knocking and saying, OK, County Council, did you guys make a final decision or not yet? I think uh, the answer is yes. Our decision was that we wanted to understand the traffic issues before we funded it. So I don't, I don't think it's timely right now to make a decision on, and have a vote on whether or not we do it. I think the merits of the stormwater project stand, for, stand on their own, and, and EDI funds are an appropriate use for that. But we conditioned, as I understood it, or at least I don't think we took a formal vote, but I, I believe in that meeting two weeks ago, all seven of us said we weren't necessarily against the, the stormwater, but we wanted more information about both Bakerview and Slater and Pacific Highway. And when the city chooses to come forward with that information, we could progress from there. I think we have taken formal action. On October 8th, we voted as a council to approve the EDI money to the city of Bellingham. We did. No, I thought that was to request the executive prepare the contract. Oh. That's true. That's right. Okay. That's true. If I may, what it does is that uh, it approves it, and then it's always been a two-step process: is, is you approve the funding and you um, instruct the administration to put the contracts together. Um, at this point, we are putting the contracts together, and the city of Bellingham is aware that uh, there's been a request for more traffic information. I would. Uh, 
I don't think that the agreements will be ready to go in two weeks, and I don't know whether they're prepared to come and do the do an expanded uh, uh, traffic explanation to the council. But uh, I, everybody is aware that when these contracts do come before you, which should probably be at about the first of the year, just after the first of the year, that they're going to have to uh, do an expanded explanation of uh, the traffic in, in the area. So. Although it would be nice in two weeks to bring it up for discussion, I think that it would probably be appropriate to wait, and as Councilmember Crawford mentioned, appropriate to wait until Bellingham is ready to come with that uh, traffic information. We'll have the contracts there, and we can take care of it as, as one comprehensive uh, uh, discussion, and then hopefully a, a decision related to it. Okay, Councilmember Kremen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I, as you prepare the contract, Mr. Executive, uh, I would like the administration to uh, confer with your public works department and anticipate and document uh, any likely transportation infrastructure improvements that are going to be needed in order to accommodate the projected uh, development in the Baker View area that will impact county infrastructure and, and add that and, and get a commitment from the, the city of Bellingham that they will pay for that infrastructure. I don't, I, well, th that's right. We're not going to get it. Uh, well, it's, we're taking, we're taking county money. Well, there's a, mis there's a difference here, though, of a legal opinion. Yeah. They, they don't believe legally they can. We believe legal, well, I'm well, sorry, we the mayor believe. of Ferndale believes legally they can. That they can use traffic impact fees for projects outside of their municipality. Billingham is well. They can use they can general use. fund money. They can. I mean, they can use. It doesn't matter. They buy property in the Lake Watkin watershed that isn't in the city to protect the the watershed. I mean, yeah, I, I feel very strongly about this because it, this this is county taxpayer money that we are shifting into the city of Bellingham. And we've already given them, I, I think we've already allocated $1.1 million for them for the waterfront redevelopment. Uh, and, and I think their, re, their request, especially for the whole enchilada, for, for the county to spend, is $3 million, isn't it? 2.5? Yeah, two-thirds loan, one-third grant. And I, I just, I, I think it's, it's just, it goes against my grain because the people that are going to be paying all the revenue, or at least half of the revenue approximately, that the city's going to generate by this development in the Bakerview area is going to be paid for by non-Bellingham residents that reside in unincorporated and other municipalities of Whatcom County. And I think it's it's unfair. If they think, you know, if they want that revenue generator, then they need to step up to the plate and pay for the infrastructure that's going to adversely impact other jurisdictions instead of having it the other way around where the other jurisdictions are going to not only give them the money to develop Bakerview area, but then after it's built, then pay all, you know, significant amounts of, of taxpayer money that's going to stay inside the city of Bellingham without any opportunity to have any representation whatsoever. It just goes against my grain and it's, it, it, it's, it's a real, it's, it's pretty audacious in my opinion. Maybe they can share the tax revenue with the county from all the sales generated in that area. If there's a mess, there's a mess. And well, but if we got 1% of their... Mess? I, no. Yeah. Again, I would... 1% yeah. of their money that they are going to get. Councilmember Crawford? Well, I'll just restate it. I, I, I think uh, 
it would be appropriate to wait at this point. Uh, I have little doubt the city is still going to be requesting the money. And at that point that they request, uh, they are aware of our concerns and uh, specifically what we've asked for uh, to address those concerns. In addition, since we had the discussion, we have a mayor uh, of Ferndale that has written a letter with, uh, you know, expounding on some of those concerns. And uh, I have uh, uh, let the city council people that I've been talking to know that uh, his concerns in his three-page letter should be addressed also with a formal response from the city. So, again, I, I feel the ball's in their court, and, and until they take some action or, or make a further request that we don't need to do anything at this point. Okay. Council Member Brenner. Yeah, I just want to add, we keep separating city, county, but it's city, county government. I'm getting a whole lot of concerns raised by phone calls and emails and everything. They're all from people who live inside the city of Bellingham. So this is not, it may be Bellingham city government wants to do it, but the, there's a, I haven't had one person, oh yeah, we did get that one letter from the engineering company that's going to do the work saying, oh yeah, the traffic's going to be terrible, but support it anyway. Yeah. I would, I found that shocking, you know, it's like, that was the only one in, in support of it. It was so ridiculous. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, any other business? Well, do we have a motion on the floor to reconsider? What well, we do, no. but um, I thought maybe Most Sam's points. comments would maybe reconsider. I like having a message there in writing to the city. I think we made our, our concerns pretty well known, and I'm not opposed to doing that. I, you know, the fact that we're going to get a contract coming to us uh, is another bite at the apple. But I'm for I'll I would support reconsideration. I what I mean I'll go with the majority of the council on this. I would support reconsidering it, and uh, that wouldn't stop them from making their case to us. So Councilmember Mann, I, I would say that I, I raised this exact question and issue in committee when the mayor and and the director were here, and no one at that time w felt prepared to to make a motion to reconsider right then. But I felt like, in summary, at the time, I said to the mayor, you know, you're, you're on notice. Like, you've heard our conversation. Mm -hmm. that there's a lot of concern up here. I don't think, by any stretch, she's taking, taking it for granted that we're going to give that money just because we don't right. formally reconsider it. Okay. You could formally reconsider it. I, I, I see why you would want to do that. But since we didn't do it that day, um, I feel a little bit weird doing it right right now, and I, I don't think the message well, no, changes all that much. My motion is to put it on for introduction to work to, oh, to, to make a decision in two weeks. To introduce for two weeks to reconsider it yeah, in two weeks. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then that's a little different. So that'd be fine. Yeah, go ahead and introduce it. That's my well, motion. so you want to, okay, so you want to talk about it in two weeks. And, when and we make have, a decision as to whether we want to recon, whether we want to. we won't have had time to hear from the city if they are able to pull together. A possible vote. And possible vote. What do you want to schedule? In finance. No. Oh, all right. <laughs> Public works. <laughs> no. Do you want to have a committee, do you want a committee of the whole? We already did Either it Either committee of the whole or public works, I don't care. No, I don't want to just do it. I want to have time to have an on, you know, a discussion and evenings. We can bring it forward in the evening and talk about it more, but I do want it in committee first. And my preference would be finance logically, but other than that, it could be committee of the whole or your committee. Or public My work. committee, absolutely, which Ken's on too, so you're not going to get out of it. No, just I don't mind. I, I thoroughly totally plan to, to engage and be present. I, I just don't, I didn't want it in my committee again because we already did it in my committee All and right. I chose at that Public time not works. to. Can I, um, if your committee's full, which I can't remember if it is or not, can I move it to a committee of the committee whole? Of the whole. If there's Either, enough, yeah, time, depending on schedule. Amongst everybody to have it in committee? That'll be part of my motion, depending on scheduling. Okay. Oh, queen. And my committee is probably going to be pretty packed next week. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Is this something we have to vote on as a council? Okay. 
All right. All those in favor of Councilmember Brenner's motion to bring this up for discussion in the Public Works Committee or the next most appropriate committee, depending on schedule, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. no. Okay, that passes five to two. Councilmember Crawford and Weimer opposed. Hmm. Any other business? <coughs> All right, any reports from council members? Councilmember Crawford? Nope. Councilmember Kremen? I'm going to withhold mine. Councilmember Brenner? Nope. I would just like to say that Thursday is the 150th anniversary of Thanksgiving in our country. It was proclaimed by President Abraham Lincoln when we were in the midst of the Civil War, and he asked our country to come together and give thanks for all that we had been given by our Almighty Father, and I just hope and wish everybody out there has a very happy Thanksgiving. Aww. Council Member Mann. I wanted to report that uh I was the MC for a, another charity auction a couple weeks ago for Hospice, uh, Wacom Hospice Foundation, and they raised nearly double uh, what they raised the year before. And also Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Services, DV SAS, had their gala uh, the same weekend, and they raised double what they uh, raised the year before. So I just wanted to point that out, and I, I think that's really a good sign and a credit to our community. Councilmember Knudsen. Well, it doesn't look like we have anybody a, from uh, Public Works still here, but uh, l last week we I had uh, attended the Puget Sound Partnerships uh, ECB board meeting, and it looks like we're going to have uh, more stormwater money that is going to be being dispersed, and I'm hoping that the county will take advantage of some of that. So, good. Councilmember Weimer. Nothing. Nothing to report. All right. Well, thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned. 1054.